A little over five years ago, my wife and I decided to do a thing and get married. Our wedding had sort of a vintage camping theme, and we thought it'd be a good idea to display pictures of us around the venue in Barnwood picture frames. With a million things on our plate trying to plan a whole wedding, I didn't have a lot of time to make anything really nice, so I just banged out a couple quick and easy picture frames with no intent of them lasting longer than the event. So, as you could imagine, they had a few imperfections. I had maybe a quarter of the tools that I do now, and I had even less experience and skill. So all I did was put some 45 degrees on some barn wood, held them together with pocket hole screws, and routed out a rabbit for the picture frame and glass. Now to my surprise, they have actually lasted about five years, but they're starting to fall apart and it's time for me to make some permanent replacements. If you see my last three videos, you saw my how-tos for making these three jigs. The first one was a miter sled for perfect 45 degree corners. The next one was a spline jig for putting splines in the corners of picture frames. And the last one was a face tapering jig. If you haven't seen those but you want to check them out, I have links to all three in the description below. But for this video, I'm going to show you how I used all three to make the perfect picture frame. I started off at the table saw, ripping strips of wood down to the width that I wanted my picture frame to be. I was using half inch cedar for these picture frames because I had a bunch left over from other projects but I was trying to be selective on the grain and get pieces that had knots or some sort of character to them to make that picture frame really pop and stand out. The actual width of the picture frame material doesn't really matter, choose what you'd like. I chose something fairly thin for this one because I have a tall, narrow picture and I thought it would look better. Now I wanted to cut all my sides to rough length and then cut the final length using the miter sled. So let me show you how I calculate the rough length. So let's say you have this picture you want to make a custom picture frame for. If you wanted to calculate the rough length of this side, you would have to do the height of the picture plus two times the width of the picture frame. As long as my rough cut length is equal to or longer than that, I know I'll have enough material for the final length of this side. And that's because you have to remember, we're gonna be cutting a rabbit or a groove to actually hold the glass and the picture itself. The actual length of the sides will be determined by this side of the rabbit cut, not the very inside of the picture frame. That'll effectively make our picture frame smaller than this rough cut length. So after I finished getting the rough cut lengths, before I routed that groove that I'm talking about, I went ahead and used the face tapering jig that I made for the planer and got these tapered down to what I wanted. So now it was time to cut the rabbit. The depth of this groove is gonna be dependent on what all you're putting inside your picture frame. For this picture frame, I made the rabbit 3 eighths of an inch thick because all I would have in it was one eighth inch thick piece of glass, a thin piece of paper that is the picture, and about an eighth inch thick piece of cardboard for the backer board. But if I were framing a painted canvas or including a few pieces of matting, then this would definitely need to be a little deeper. As far as the width or the actual distance from the inside edge of the picture frame, it doesn't have to be too thick. I made mine 1 8 of an inch thick. It just needs to be enough to hide the edge of the picture and hold everything in place. Now that we had the rabbit cut, it was time to cut all the sides to their final length. This is where the picture frame miter sled comes into play so that you can get the perfect 45 degree angles so that you have a perfectly square picture frame when it's all said and done. To use it, you just have to put the inside edge of one of the picture frame pieces against the non-ruler side fence. Go ahead and cut your 45 on that side. Then you switch over to the ruler side, adjust the stop block to the exact length of the side of the picture that you're making a piece of frame for. Put the 45 degree angle side right up against your stop block and then go ahead and cut your second 45 degree angle. The magic of this jig is that the way the ruler is actually attached to the sled, you're actually measuring that inside edge of the rabbit that I was talking about earlier. Here's a sped up single take of this process on the long side for my picture.
Once all the sides were cut to final length, it was time to glue them all together. They just hold together with some glue on the edges and then after we get this glued up, we'll actually put a spline in and glue it in place that'll give it some extra strength. About halfway into clamping this, I realized I forgot to use positioning squares. I wasn't having an issue though, nothing was slipping or sliding, so I just kept on going, but I definitely recommend using positioning squares to make sure everything stays square. After giving that glue all night to dry, I was able to take the clamps off and everything turned out really good. It was still perfectly square, even without those positioning squares. So next it was time to cut the grooves or the slots for the splines, cut the splines and get those inserted. This spline jig makes really easy work of cutting these slots for the splines. All you gotta do is set it up on the fence, run it across the saw blade a couple times and you're good to go. The one thing you wanna make sure you do that I did off camera here was make sure that the height of the blade is less than the thickness of the spline material that you're putting in. If you make it too deep, then you're gonna screw up your picture frame and have to start over. Adding splines to your picture frame does give it some extra strength, but I really do it just because they look damn pretty. Just get a nice contrasting color, something darker or lighter than what your picture frame is, and man, they just pop and add a lot of character. Inserting these splines is really straightforward. You just want to get as much glue on as much surface area as you can, put them in place, make sure they're nice and flush, tight in spot, let them dry, and then cut them flush. After all the splines were flush cut, I sanded everything with 220 grit sandpaper and then made it nice and pretty using some Danish oil. Now that the picture frames were all finished, it was time to insert the guts. As far as cutting the glass, I just had it cut at a local hardware store. Um, I will go on a little rant here, and let me just say, I used to work at a hardware store when I was in high school at an Ace Hardware store, and I cut glass all the time, and I got pretty proficient at it. Nowadays, when I go in and I watch people cut glass, it just makes me cringe watching how slow or how many panes of glass they break before they finally get it right. End of rant. Anyway, once I got all the glass cut, I came home and I used the glass to actually trace out the size of the backer board or the cardboard that I was gonna use to go behind the picture, cut that out with a razor blade, and then put everything inside the picture frame. I chose to use craft paper to hold everything in place because I could also use it to double as a dust guard to help prevent dust from getting inside the picture frame. I just traced out the picture frames on the craft paper and then cut that out, stapled it to the back of the picture frame, and then used a razor blade to trim it just slightly inside the outer edge of the picture frame. We are really happy with how these picture frames turned out. They look great and at least they're not falling apart like those old barnwood ones are. Those three jigs made it super simple to make these. Remember, links in the description below if you want to learn how to make those jigs. Until next time, take a chance and make something.